We are inching closer to playoff time, and it's waivers. You need to get a win, and we have some super disgusting names for you. I mean, guys that you do, you were going to want to close your eyes. You're going to want to put them on your waiver claims, get them in your lineup, and get some points. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show. The holidays can be hectic, but preparing festive meals just got easier. Now you can cut out grocery shopping and limit meal prep time with HelloFresh. Get up to 14 free meals plus three free gifts with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And Foot Clan, when you do anything in life, there's, well, one way to do it, and then maybe there's a smarter way to do it. You might already be investing in cryptocurrency, but did you know you can trade Bitcoin, Ethereum, and over 80 different cryptocurrencies in a tax-advantaged IRA. What? With an Alto Crypto IRA, you can trade crypto like Bitcoin and af avoid or defer the taxes. This is something I didn't even know about. We've all had uh, Coinbase accounts, right? And maybe you thought about opening one. We've talked about Coinbase. But you can do that and you can use that account and then you can work with Alto Crypto IRA and get a tax-advantaged account. This is pretty cool. You can invest with as little as 10 bucks, no setup charges, secure trading. Uh, they have an integration with Coinbase. And there are, like I said, there's 80 plus coins available. So you can, um, you can do all your investing and you can get the tax benefits. If you're ready to take your investments to the next level and diversify like the pros and trade without tax headaches, you can open an Alto Crypto IRA with as little as 10 bucks. Just go to altoira.com slash footballers. That's A-L-T-O-I-R-A.com slash footballers. Start investing in cryptocurrency today. Go to altoira.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! Welcome in. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Hope you're doing well out there on this fine Tuesday. Out there in Radio Land. <laughs> Wherever you are. <laughs> Whoa! It is November 23rd, and tomorrow is <laughs> the Megalodon. Megalodon. Yeah, that's right. We'll be with you all day, or, or so it will feel. We have a huge show tomorrow, the Megalodon Show. We'll be giving away a Debo Samuel signed jersey as well. We'll give you a hashtag on the show for those of you that uh, oh. make it through. And I'm... Oh, you don't know where we're going to put it. That's what I was going to say. You don't know where we're going to drop the hashtag, but if you tweet at us, then we'll give away some stuff. It's always a good time. You'll have, you know, I, there's no pressure to listen straight through it right away. I mean, if you need to, to space it out, if you can't handle the Megalodon, I get it. It is it is a an audio feast to go with your Thanksgiving feast. And look, you got to go back for seconds, right? Sometimes thirds. Yeah. Sometimes fourths. <laughs> That's right. Story of my life, Mike. <laughs> is there incentive for us to have somebody listen to the Megalodon on half speed? Oh, <laughs> um, is that is that no. a uh, is that possible? Could somebody do that? Oh, they can, but that's just. But the punishment. NFL games will be over <laughs> by the time they finish. That's fair. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. Join the foot dot com is the fantasy football community. Let's talk about that game last night, Monday Night Football, oh, Buccaneers yeah. 30, Giants 10. Only got their one touchdown because of an interception that uh, deflected off of the shoulder of Mike Evans and gave yeah, him a 10-yard field. It was a very bizarre play. So Saquon did return. It wasn't a great fantasy performance for him. Six for 31 through the air, six for 25 on the ground. Not unexpected, though, against the Buccaneers' defense in your first game back. You are looking to brighter days with Saquon Barkley? Yeah, I, I think so. It was uh, certainly nice to see him get six receptions. That's a great yes. baseline for um, any running back. And so I, I think as 
we, we've talked about this. His schedule opens up. He's got a nice end of the year schedule. He passes by. He's healthy. I do think Saquon, um, uh, who has obviously been a, a massive disappointment for fantasy uh, between meh games and injury, I think he's going to be one of those guys that really helps uh, take teams cross the finish line second half of the year. Uh, Tom Brady, 30 for 46, 300 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. Uh, it was it was okay. I mean, it's it's the way it works with touchdown-dependent quarterbacks. You know, Brady can go out there if they run in a couple of touchdowns. Are or, you talking about Tom Brady, the the fellow that ripped off that 10-yard that scamper before he like went baseball cleats into the you, defender's shin? Did you see what he said when they brought it up? No. And they're like, uh, how would you feel about that 10-yard run and he goes 11 yards <laughs> <laughs> did he really yeah, yeah. oh Ooh. incredible i'm sorry mr brady we, we are looking at the official record and it says 10 that's right in his mind it was 11 uh Kadarius tony with the most rondale moore type of line ever 12 targets turned that into 40 total receiving yards which was a team high horrible game from uh our good friend kenny galladay oh oh <laughs> It's not smooth. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> um, it's not smooth. I haven't hit that smooth drop in the whole year. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the routes are the routes are bad. Didn't he? Uh, but the real, he had one game. He did have one big game. Yeah, yeah I think right. he had a game over a hundred yards um, earlier this season. But I, I think we should. Daniel Jones sucks. That's right. Like. Can yes, we, of course. I've been saying this forever. Yes, it's just one of those things where I feel so bad for Giants fans. He who, had a QBR of fifteen. I mean, they're gonna have to. They're he's still under contract next year, and it's just like your 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 franchise is dead for a year and a half because the guy has flashes. He could throw a good ball. He's got athleticism. He could run. But when you are as inconsistent as Daniel Jones, the franchise has no chance. Yeah, it's true. Um, they really need a Tim Boyle to turn to at a time like this. Oh, goodness. Uh, two picks for Daniel Jones. Uh, other headlines from the game. Mike Evans, Chris, uh, Chris Godwin, they did their thing. Mm -hmm. Rob Gronkowski returned, looked great. Six for 71, didn't score, still had a, a double-digit fantasy game. He looked excellent. Yeah. Like, the, it made me think about trading for him. There was like one particular play where it, just, it was a deeper shot. Gronk went up and high-pointed it, and it was – this, that's like a vintage Gronk move right there, which we haven't, as great as he had been, you know, early on in the season, he looked like just a giant redwood out there <laughs> lumbering, like, and when, when someone took him down, it was, it was a crash from the heavens, and he looked like he was hurt every single time, but he looked great in this game. Would you rather start Kyle Pitts or Rob Gronkowski? Gronk. Ooh, that is a great question. I, I think it would be matchup based, but if I have to pick one the rest of the season and lock him in, yeah, I would go with I mean, Gronk's touchdown upside, better offense. Aside from the injury games, he does – I mean, I guess we – It's only a handful of them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Wow, he's played fewer games than I yeah, remember. Yeah, he's, he's only played three, right? Uh, he's, Three relevant ones? Well, so week one and two, the tight end one, tight end two. Week three, he did get hurt. But he still he had four for fifty five uh, before leaving about halfway through the game. So I mean he was already he was on his way yeah to another good game and then six for seventy one. No, he's been he's, good. He's been fantastic. Fournette was a disappointment relative to expectation. He, yeah, he lost the touchdown to to Ronald Jones, who had just two fewer carries in the game. See, not just lost a touchdown to him, but they it looked like they were just rotating drives, which. Uh, maybe that happened in some somewhere along the line. I I admit that they were doing that, but this was wild. That it was not just Ronald Jones spelling Fournette for a play here and there. It was no, they're they're giving him full drives. Maybe they're just preparing for the playoff run and making sure that their backup is is ready to step yeah, in. They did win a Super Bowl doing that last year. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think that they needed to really run him into the ground. Uh, he, he did get six receptions, which and had other like. Big receptions that kept getting called back on penalties. Yeah, so he's fine for fantasy. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. 
All right, two players on today's Where There's Smoke, There's Fire segment. Let's start with my guy, Darnell Mooney of the Chicago Bears. There he is. And um, cost you nothing in the draft. And since week four, he's the wide receiver 17 on a team that is difficult to watch offensively. And the last two games he's played against Pittsburgh and Baltimore, the number four overall fantasy wide receiver. Both weeks. Both weeks. You got to love to see this from Darnell Mooney. Uh, the talent was always on display, in my opinion, on film last year. You've always had quarterback issues. And again, this past week, it was making a lot out of, what, five receptions on 16 targets? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. That's you always want to you always want a good thirty one percent catch rate. Um, really going to help pad the stats. It it really is crazy how efficient um, he's been once he has the ball. Like sixteen targets is incredible. But I he had three receptions the week prior, um, and one rushing attempt, <laughs> and that was when he was the wide receiver uh, four two weeks ago. So the question going forward to me is. Will he have enough utilization to allow his talent, which is great, um, to shine? And I can't imagine that he doesn't. He seems like he's the number one in the offense. He's overtaken Allen Robinson, who's not even there. Correct. And I'm not sure that it matters who the quarterback is because Justin Fields, Andy Dalton, okay. I mean, they're mediocre. You're. I expect a 50% catch rate. Um, yeah, Detroit this week on Thanksgiving with Andy Dalton, a quarterback. Yeah, I would I mean, I love him. Yeah, and currently Allen Robinson was listed as the, you know, he he wouldn't have practiced uh for this upcoming game on Thursday. So that for the immediate future, this is absolutely fire. I'm very happy to play Mooney against Detroit. After that, you have a you have Arizona and Green Bay, which isn't the greatest back-to-back -back, uh, uh schedule here for for the Bears and for Darnell Mooney, but he's a great player, so as a whole, if, if I have to pick, I guess I would go with fire because I do expect him to be a you know a top twenty four option heading into this week. Yeah, I agree. Twenty three, uh, twenty eight percent target share in the offense. Uh, Cam Newton, oh baby, is the second player we'll approach here with where there's smoke, there's fire. He was a quarterback four in his uh, debut at starting for the Panthers again in the sequel, and um, you know he had ten for forty six on the ground, a rushing touchdown. Has a rather brutal schedule from weeks 15 on. Uh, Buffalo, Tampa Bay, New Orleans, Tampa Bay. That's the, the final four games of the year. But gets Miami this week, then the bye week, then Atlanta. Uh, I guess I'll go smoke. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll go smoke here just with the way the schedule lines up. The fact that he will, like the, Cam Newton of old would not give you any duds. This Cam Newton, I think, will. And if you get a dud in either of those good matchups and then you've got those other bad ones on the way forward, I don't I don't know if I believe it or trust it. Yeah, this is really tough because of that schedule. I I believe that Cam Newton is going to be good for fantasy. You saw, you know, 40 rushing yards, a rushing touchdown, and then you've got the weapons. You've got Christian McCaffrey to to take any one of those dump offs to the house or DJ Moore. Um even Robbie Anderson has been a little bit rejuvenated with Cam Newton. The schedule's not great, but I think that he is a player that you could you could have grabbed off of waivers, and you're going to get more out of him reliably than any other this time of year waiver guy. So yeah. I will buy. Yeah, uh, fire. <laughs> You'll buy the fire. I will buy the fire. Uh, I'll go fire as well. It it may not be as good as you know quarterback four because you don't get to play Washington every single week, which. They're a delightful matchup for all fantasy quarterbacks uh, who get to take that that matchup, but I, he'll be he'll be relatively safe. I mean, him finishing outside of the top fifteen, which you don't want your quarterback at fifteen, but he just he feels like one of those guys that won't tumble below that. Like very fantasy relevant last year, and that's without Christian McCaffrey and and DJ Moore. So I think that the weapons around him are enough to to pad the stats that he'll be a, a fine fantasy quarterback down the stretch. That was where there's smoke, there's fire, presented by our friends at Traeger Grills. Traditions, like the one coming up, mm. are better with Traeger. I've already got my brisket. Done. Oh, 
I'm 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 following the instructions. Yeah. I am I've got a defrosting. I'm I'm a little nervous. I've never done a brisket before, but they've they've got a handy dandy uh, you know, guide. step by step guide of of here on what day to do. So I'm with you. It's in the fridge. It's yes. defrosting. I'm very yes. excited. And this and you always have Jack in the Box to fall back on if you fail. So Oh well that's for dinner. Uh this Thanksgiving add wood fired flavor to your feast with a Traeger grill. Go to Traeger.com slash footballers. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what to say. Um, Adam Troutman suffered a sprained MCL, Mike. He's out four to six weeks. You're really hitting home runs on Un- these. Universe. This isn't fair. Blake Jarwin. Like, the process was sound. Adam Troutman. The player was excellent. He was on his way to just a monster day. Had a great day. Got it done for fantasy football. But come on. Stop it. Maybe this is one of those situations where um, oh, if you if you're thinking about like whoever you bring up as I'm your start of the week. Like, I'll slip a note over to one of you guys to say it. No, no, no. If you if you bring it up, they'll just um, like maybe sit out that week. Maybe just like or, or like, I don't know, wear a pillow suit, protect themselves against whatever is going to happen. It's like Final Destination. I mean, but Troutman's it, out for four to six weeks. It was happening. The, you you can pretend that that is true because you will. I mean, it's like you Jarwin last year. You, you can't, can't disprove games that he's out. So as far as you're concerned, the next four to six weeks, he would have scored 30 points a week. He would have been the number one tight end. And it was just okay. this close. It was an MCL away, Mike. Alvin Kamara, non-participant in the estimated injury report. Mark Ingram limited. They do play on Thanksgiving against the Bills. That's a fun night game. Yeah, the, I I'm not in love with the Thursday Thanksgiving slate personally. Is, it, is but, that because of uh, the Lions and the Bears? Yeah, the Lions and the Bears and the hurt Cowboys. You know the versions of these teams. Even the Saints, if they don't have Alvin Kamara, not the best. Um, still a little too early. Obviously, this was an estimated injury report. They didn't practice, but they said if they had, he wouldn't have played. Here's some good news for that uh, limited Cowboys. Jason C.D. Lamb might play. That is super important. Doing really well, and we'll have a chance to play against the Raiders. So if you want your DAC confidence increased, you want to be able to play CD, it's looking good. Yeah, oh, they, they, can, they can overcome not having Cooper or not having CD, but when they don't have either, I think that's really rough. Justin Fields is not expected to play. Like I said, Andy Dalton's going to start on Thursday. Uh, Michael Carter will miss a few weeks after suffering a low-grade ankle sprain. So there will be opportunities. Today's show's waivers. We'll talk about the options in the Jets' backfield. Yeah. Zach Wilson has a chance to start Sunday's game. More bad news for the Jets. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> I just I if know it's so hard. If there was a button so I could push to, for the dead the dead emoji, <laughs> the corpse, oh, I would push it. What if you're a Jets fan? Are you? <laughs> if you're a Jets yes, fan, you want to yes. see your young man grow up. You're you're out. Like you're you're playing for nothing this year except for. The His process of seeing Zach Wilson turn into a franchise quarterback. Yeah, it's the same thing with the Bears. You'd rather see Justin Fields out there developing. I mean, yeah, the, it's the same just, thing for the Giants. You just need Daniel Jones. Just needs to just get there. I think I think I've done that experience. What's so. what is interesting? Are you making the Zach Wilson to Daniel Jones comp right here? Yes. Oh, that's just silly. It's not fair. He's a young young boy. What's interesting here for Zach Wilson moving forward is his backup quarterback quarterbacks have proved. That this team can move the ball on offense. They can win. Uh, so if Zach Wilson comes out and completely fails, that, that's on Zach Wilson. That's what's really unfortunate is how good the backups have been. <laughs> Zach how- Wilson has had a couple of, of games that were flashes. You know, 21 for 34, 297 and 2 against Tennessee. The Titans game was great. Uh, and then even the first game of the year against Carolina, he had a couple touchdowns. Um, 258 yards uh, you, there's been some flashes where he's he's look he's looked yes. good for drives or halves and, well, and, and uh, to take all the snark out and just be honest what we've seen with the backup quarterbacks and the emergence of like Elijah Moore and the yes. offensive system those things around him have gotten better as well so Zach Wilson coming back might just be inheriting a better situation that's right. the glass half full version Jamal Agnew will miss the rest of the year placed mm. on injured reserve Jaguars wide receiver and 
hybrid running back. It would be interesting to see if they move LaVisca Chenault back to that role. Yeah, they, they probably will. Uh, Nick Sirianni said Jordan Howard is going to uh, likely miss the Week 12 game against the Giants. Logan Thomas expected to be des designated for return. We're going to try this again? Yeah, yep. and I think it's we are. super important. Um, there's something about this team and what's happened to Curtis Samuel that gives me so much more like pause because it's the same roster. You know, it's like Samuel's, oh, he's coming back. No, he's not. Logan Thomas, he's coming back. No, he's not. And Curtis Samuel, by the way, is supposed to be back this week. Is he really? Yeah, yes. he almost played last week. Wow. Yeah, you've kind of put him out of your mind. Oh, he's just I, – I was so excited for what he could do on this offense with Ryan Fitzpatrick, and now this is like a different era. <laughs> I don't remember. I think they were very excited for that um, too. Also, Calvin Ridley, no update on the personal status according to head coach Arthur Smith. He is eligible to return. So if he decided to come back, if something changes, um, he's eligible to return. This is a team that is – going to be in the mix for that seventh seed in the NFC. I mean, I, can I say something real quick before sure. we, we close out this segment? My initial thought about this extra playoff spot, the lack of the bye, was a bit curmudgeon -y. It was like, you know, especially when you hear, like we come into the, the show weekly and we're like, did you know the Falcons yeah. are in the playoffs right now? And um, I've decided I love it. Oh, because we haven't even experienced it yet. I know, I but I've decided I love it now because we're 11 weeks in and I look at the standings and in the AFC, there's like, you know, there's like five teams right in the mix and the NFC, you've got a bunch in the mix tied at five and five. I think it makes games more exciting in this tier of like even the ability to fight back into the playoffs. It seems like the seventh spot is going to be a mediocre record at best. So mm -hmm. the bottom third of the league or you know that lower half it's almost like they're all fighting for this one spot to sneak into the playoffs and it's exciting i i completely I mean, agree. san francisco's when, a ha it basically tied for a spot right now yeah when when they announced it my excitement was around fantasy football the fact that more teams would be competing late into the season they're not just all saying oh let's you know not get our guys let's back it in our young guys injured and you know, play for the future. This is, you know, these are, there's a lot of teams now that want the right to, for that first round exit. And, um, <laughs> they're going to get it. One of them's going to get Maybe, it. Maybe man, crazy stuff happens in the playoffs. So that team will then be playing the number two seed, the non buy yes. team that is correct. right in their stadium, but it's the NFL. So anything can happen on any given week for sure. And it's, um, it's exciting. I think it's going to be fun. And, uh, We'll see how it goes. That was today's so, news and notes brought to you by our friends at Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download Sleeper. Check out the breaking alerts channels faster than every other source. Uh, to, to go back real quick and touch on the Calvin Ridley information, I had been waiting for his IR status eligibility to be able to return so that we got news. And the news that there was no news to me is news. Like, that is... It, right uh very meta but arthur smith he has no it does not seem like he has an expectation or a timeline or any information that would lead me to believe that calvin ridley is is coming back anytime soon so It'll probably it, be a question asked to arthur smith every couple of weeks for the remainder of the year yeah i mean but the hope was that when this time came They'd say, hey, Ridley's doing much better. We hope to have him back soon. He's like, I have no idea. I, right. You know, so that to me is is negative. Um, but you want to know what's positive? Uh, tell me. Head and shoulders. Scalp shield technology. It's mm. never not working to give you up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Look, tomorrow's a megalod megalodon episode, and we've got – our head and shoulders never not working segment. We're going to be taking a little dynasty look oh. on tomorrow's episode. Don't miss it because we are never not, not working. working. Head and shoulder scalp shield works day and night to protect you against doing flakes. That again. Oh, we're doing it again. <laughs> we're going to do it in about 20 seconds. Regular use of head and shoulder scalp shield technology provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. To get up to 100% dandruff protection, that's never, never, not, not, not working. working.
Uh, Brutal. <laughs> Brutal. You can do that with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. <laughs> And Foot Clan want to thank today's sponsor, Simply Safe, a longtime sponsor of this show, a longtime protector of our equipment here, keeping yeah. our keeping our cameras safe, keeping the computers Keeps Brooks safe. We talk about Brooks's gear, but we actually That's true. we actually protect Brooks with Simply we, Safe. We put him in a because he uh, lives here on a hyperbolic chamber. Hyperbolic? <laughs> yeah, not hyperbaric. <laughs> it's just it's a super really it's, big chamber. It's so exaggerated. <laughs> The chamber's too big. It's bigger than the Grand Canyon. There's sarcasm in there. There's, there's, there's a whole bunch of things. Super hyperbolic. We, it's the almost chamber. like we're making the whole thing up. Almost. But you know what we're not making up, Jason? What? Simply Safe being named the best home security system of 2021 by U.S. News and World Report. We would never make that up. No, like, and you can get 40% off the award-winning home security system right now. And that's not hyperbolic. 40% is real. No, that that is very accurate. Like you can jump on the site. You can easily customize a system for your home online in minutes, and you get a free custom recommendation from Simply Safe. These are Simply Safe's biggest discounts of the year. We're talking a complete home security system starting at just over a hundred dollars, and no long-term contracts. You get that garbage out of here that's for Simply Safe. That's a good deal. Take advantage of Simply Safe's holiday sale and get forty percent off your new home security system by visiting simplysafe.com/footballers. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash footballers for 40% off your entire system. Hurry, this offer ends soon. <laughs> Put me in, coach. Look, I know I know people, I mean, I, I listen to podcasts all the time. I know sometimes people skip the ads, sometimes they stay tuned for them. You're going to want to go back. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 you need to, oh, uh, man. you might miss something. I made some big claims. Yeah, yeah <laughs> real big. By the way, there, from what I can look at, uh, while while you were talking, I I was scoping out the uh, NFL standings. Thirty two teams. From what I can tell, there's eight that are out of it. So you you're talking about seventy five percent of the league that that's in it. Yeah, that's seventy five percent of the league that is uh, five or six or you know four and six or better. Pretty good going into week twelve. Yeah, I mean that's fun. That's a good time. All right, bye weeks. Welcome back, Broncos and Rams. See you later, Chiefs, Cardinals. Uh, those two teams on by a lot of players on those rosters that are relevant and um, we still have four teams in week 13 and four teams in week 14 going on by so you I'm not I'm not happy about the week 14 by uh, you're going to need to do some dancing the the injuries are piling up we talked about last week's kind of crazy as it is with injury and then now you have a couple more weeks ahead with multiple teams on by so Lots going on. Let's start. Uh, let's start looking at the wide receiver position. People want to know: Can I drop? Right. We want permission to drop, please. Yep. All right. Uh, Kenny Galladay. Yes. You don't need to, but you can. Corey Davis. Same. Seems like you don't need to, but you can. Emmanuel Sanders. Man. You Manny will. Sanders is very, very difficult to gauge what is going on because he's been bad, but. At the same time, the Bills' overall passing attack has been struggling here for uh, a couple weeks. So I I don't think I would. Yeah, I, I'd hold on to him. I would not either. If he was would on my bench waivers. Him and wait? I, yeah, sure, I'm fine with that. But when you compare Emmanuel Sanders and Kenny Galladay, you're you're saying I mean, yeah, I'll, it, I'll take Emmanuel. Yeah, I want the offense. I want the quarterback. I want the high potential of you know a game where you've got four passing touchdowns and Emmanuel Sanders gets one or two of them uh we were looking at the a dot numbers in the NFL yesterday through 10 weeks average depth of target is what that is so which players are getting targeted further down the field and it was all predicated on the ridiculous number that Rondale Moore has which is like two yards <laughs> which is just like Debo is known for like a lot of underneath screen games. Debo has one of the 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 shortest a yeah, dots the, the lowest a 8.1 for Debo. So four times. Rondale. And Rondale's at two. Like, you know, a, n a normal running back's average depth of target ends up being like negative 0.5 yards or something right. like that due to screen passes. But it was crazy. Emmanuel Sanders has one of the highest. Mm -hmm. So he's still the highest value targets that you can get when he is targeted. Marvin Jones. Uh, I would kind of hold and wait and see right here with Marvin Jones. In he fact, I may flex him. Right now, I have him flexed over Emmanuel Sanders this week. Yeah, I was going to say Marvin Jones might be someone that people have moved on from, and he could be on your waivers. We're checking with Jamal Agnew out 
Marvin Jones could get a bump up in uh, necessity. Now, T. Higgins, this is a player I am fine dropping. T. Higgins uh, has Man. had really no games that have helped you this year. So I'm fine moving on to one of these options we're going to talk about. What do you guys think? It's it's hard to keep putting on the cape for T. Higgins because he's, he's not coming through. I mean, even his good games, you're like, that was that was pretty fine of T Higgins. Yeah, he has not he has not exploded. That being said, it, you know the three games prior to this last dud, he was averaging seventy nine receiving yards. So it's not like he's killing you. He just he has not been getting touchdowns. Uh, Jamar Chase says all the your touchdowns belong to me. Um, I, you know this is just a matter of who's available. Would I would I drop him if uh, one of these three? probably weight rostered guys is available yes if I could grab um Elijah Moore if I could grab Darnell Mooney I would I would be willing to do that over T Higgins I don't know that most of your waiver wire guys are better than T Higgins though definitely like Sanders more because you're looking at ancillary targets there but you got the Josh Allen the offense you don't have an offense that's going to give the ball 30 times like the Bengals did to Joe Mixon Michael Gallup Elijah Moore, Darnell Mooney, you just mentioned a couple names. Those are the likely rostered but top targets at wide receiver. Michael Gallup's going to have a huge opportunity. Regardless of CeeDee Lamb's availability, Gallup is a play this week due to the absence of Amari Cooper, mm -hmm. the target totals. He had 10 last week. They didn't turn into much, but he's going to be relevant this week. Elijah Moore has been on fire. Mm -hmm. um, you need to go target him and hope that Zach Wilson and it continues like Jason said the half full against Houston this week you're gonna have an opportunity and they're doing the Jets are doing better when they give the ball to Elijah Moore yeah because he's got incredible juice he's so mm -hmm. shifty uh, powerful runner so I, I I really like him he would be not only rostered but has to be started at this point Darnell Mooney we just talked about him extensively if he's there go get him now in terms of the main waiver wire pickup pickups at wide receiver I can't say that I am extremely enthusiastic about any of the players that are unrostered out there at wide receiver. That's why it's the waiver wire. Um, yeah, but it, you know, the waiver wire on a lot of weeks, you have two or three targets that are sure. like jumping out at you that are rostered under 50%. I think that they're the product of injuries and bye weeks and people are stashing players. There's just not as much availability. So if I'm looking out there, who's your number one target? Like, I, I might have said Cedric Wilson going up against the Raiders on Thanksgiving without CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper. Now there's some question marks there. Yeah, it's it's not great on the waiver wire. I think my number one target of guys that are you know available in at least half the leagues would probably be Van Jefferson. Um, I, I think he is a talented player. He's on a great offense. Don't watch last game. He ha No, obviously. I mean, everybody has down games, but... Um, you know, he, he knows the offense. Well, the absence of Robert Woods, someone needs to step up and obviously they brought in Odell Beckham, but I still think that, um, Van Jefferson on this, on this team can get it going. And that's not like a, just a matchup play or a one week. Um, I, I think he could have a decent rest of season. I'm not in love with them, but there's not a lot of names out there that I'm clamoring for at wide receiver. If I was looking at a one week rental start i might do it i might go marquez valdez scantling this week okay I, I i like the you know you're, you're taking on the rams this game has the potential to be uh pretty interesting and you know that the, the ramsey effect obviously he's not shadowing the way he was before but if you're looking at a peripheral target where the focus of that defense a smart defense is going to be Devonte adams i think i would when I look at these other options, like I, I, I would play MVS for the upside over Jameson Crowder with one of the lowest A dots in all of football, and you, you're hoping for a touchdown because if, if Jameson Crowder does not score, you're getting six for thirty eight. Yeah, the, a lot of these players are dependent on other variables like MVS. If Alan Lazard is still not going to play, exactly, then yes, then then. Marquez Valdez scaling is is nice. Like without Lazard, we saw it a thirty two percent target share. It wasn't just the big uh the big splash play. It was he was getting targeted early and very often. Jamison Crowder, I like him too in a PPR league, but 
if Zach Wilson is back, it, it, like I like Crowder because of Joe Flacco. But if if Zach Wilson is back, I think that kind of goes out the window too. Cedric Wilson, if CeeDee Lamb is in, then Wilson is out. So I think I'm with Jason that my top target, if he's there, would be Van Jefferson. Um, and then – Maybe look at then, Kendrick Bourne. Uh, Kendrick Bourne, he's so – He keeps getting difficult. it done. And yes, it's he does. difficult because – he doesn't – here's what you want. Play him more. You want a guy with You're a ton talking of targets. To the, I'm talking to the Patriots to play him more. Yeah, I'm just – You want someone with a ton of targets uh, and uh, uh, really in a great keep offense. getting it done, does he? Well, I mean, he, four, relative, four relative, for 42 last week. Relative to the other options on the team, he does. And he's up against Tennessee this week. Would you rather – let me ask you this. Would you rather take a shot on LaVisca Chenault? Moving into a better role because yeah yeah Agnew's I would, gone. I would, yeah I mean this is the level we're talking about yeah here. we're not for excited sure, about for it. Sure. how about Robbie Anderson with um, Cam Newton back no, no 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 touchdown two weeks ago no 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 touchdown not interested. this last week <laughs> not interested <laughs> yeah so he didn't score this last week he was five for thirty no touchdown oh that's right um, Drake Juan Smith for the Saints is he's yeah. out there every play yeah he's at least. It's interesting. He had eight targets. Now, the rumor, uh, the rumor mill is swirling that we could see a move. Uh, the Saints move on from Trevor Simeon. They did just give a very hearty new contract to offensive weapon Taysom Hill, who has accounted for something like 200 yards of offense. And he's going to get $22.5 million guaranteed. But. Traquan, eight targets. He's he has taken over as How the, we not the de facto on number that? one. How do we Which? not report on the Taysom Hill the contract? Contract. I just did. I mean, because it's like it's just that's a massive. I mean, if we're that's a big deal. Is it? Yeah. Like, you just like for his long term sure. quarterback value. Yeah, it's a it's a deal that could be worth ninety five million dollars. It's it's a deal that fluctuates between what position he plays if he earns the job. Like this is at a minimum. The team saying he's going to be in competition for this job potentially for years to come, and and so I think for Dynasty, like it's it's certainly a, a little bit of a yes. an extension of your own in his potential value. I totally agree, on the, and his on the utilization part. too. Like he, even if he's not the quarterback, you don't pay a guy this much money guaranteed and not use him. I mean, he this They've year been doing that for years. Yeah, this year he had a serious concussion. He yeah. had he had multiple games where he missed. And so I don't read too much into this year's utilization yet. Well, it, I mean, it, it's difficult to gauge where they are with Taysom Hill because Jameis beat him out. And then Trevor Simeon, I know he had the concussion, but Taysom Hill has been back and, and active. So, But they stuck with Trevor Simeon. I don't know if that was still just their concern about the concussion uh, for Taysom Hill. So, it, yes, there's there's definitely a, a dynasty watch for – for him, but Traquan Smith, he is the number one guy. Adam Troutman, a lot of targets had been starting to go towards him, like six a week for the past month. Perhaps those go to Jawan Johnson now, but Traquan Smith could fill that void and see, you know, eight plus targets a week. Certainly, and and I think because we've talked about all of these names that n no one is really exciting. You're just going to have to decide which matchup you like, and and the you know, the situation of your roster, right? Are you looking for someone who could pop the rest of the season or are you looking for a matchup play? Because of all the murkiness, I feel like I should be picking up Curtis Samuel. <laughs> I mean, these names are... If, yes, it, we're back. De I'm, we're I feel back, like baby. If he's actually back, almost played last week, if he is a part... DeAndre Carter is a nobody who has had relevant games um, and, you know, is, is being used. Taylor Heineke is willing to throw the ball without any fear, even when he should have fear. So if he's healthy, I feel like there's a chance maybe you've got a better player than all these other names we're throwing out there. He's if at I, least good. If I'm looking at one week, I like I said, I'd throw MVS out there. If I'm looking for rest of season, I think that's when you say like like Traquan, Van Jefferson, and Kendrick Bourne are your highest considerations there in terms of like at least you know they will be you can put them in your lineup and hope every week. Sure. And then the, the deepest of deep leagues, I, I we know you're out there. Uh, Nick Westbrook-Akine for the Tennessee Titans is the last man standing. 
The matchup is not great against the, the New England Patriots, but A.J. Brown is hurt. Marcus Johnson has a hamstring injury. Julio Jones is out. It's like, there's no one left. I don't love playing him, but he'll he'll he be was, out there. He and was seven for 107. Yes, he, he came through with a 100-yard game. It feels like we're talking the same thing we said about Marcus Johnson last week, but you're right. I, I didn't bring him up at first because of the matchup, but I kind of – I had the Marcus Johnson injury in my head. I did not have the A.J. Brown injury yeah. in my head. And with both of those guys out, you know, it's probably worth mentioning they're tight ends in a streaming category this week. Just sure. With, like, they have to do something. <laughs> you know how we always talk about the Patriots lock down whatever your number one option is. Good luck. Maybe this is the way to beat them. We have no number one <laughs> option. The joke's on you, New England. Who are you going to shut yeah, down? Who, who Nobody? Shut That's right. I mean, this will be incredible. If they come out and have a great offensive performance, we've got the key to beating the Patriots. Bench all the stars. Do you think that in the Patriots meeting this morning, they're like looking for that option to stop, and it's like, yeah, it's Adrian Peterson. They, they, probably. <laughs> Adrian Peterson's the guy. I think, I think they're running around just sprinting from room to room, papers flying Who is everywhere, it? Who is trying it? to figure out what, what do we stop. They have nothing. They really don't have anything. De Deonta Foreman? I mean, <laughs> we don't have a report, Brooksy, on AJ Brown's status, though, right? Like, it, I thought the the X rays were negative, but they were doing heard, more tests. But we, yeah, we still need an update. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, and let's move on to running backs. Are you willing to drop Zach Moss and Alex Collins? No, they're running backs, not Alex <laughs> Collins. Moss, I'm definitely willing to. Yeah, drop. Zach Moss, I think, could be a waiver wire landmine for like. Because if your roster's twenty nine percent of snaps, if your league sees Zach Moss out there, someone will pick him up, and you know that they are now. That team is clogging a spot on their bench with Zach Moss, who is completely unplayable. Matt Burita has not not that Matt Burita's a fantasy superstar right now, but he's been worked in far to the point that this two this this two running back backfield, which was completely void of real strong fantasy value at, at, on a week-to-week uh, -week week -week basis. basis. It has been destroyed by Matt Burita. So I'm out completely on all Bills running backs for the foreseeable future. This has been a problem for them for years. They cannot, they cannot find production at the running back position, and it's breaking their offense down. Um, running back options, check your waiver wire just in case Jeff Wilson, Tony Pollard, Ramondre Stevenson are out there. Um, they're highly rostered, but I would say that, you know, Ramondre is available in, in a decent amount of leagues, not, not probably about half. Yeah. I mean, and he would be just such an important pickup. He's too good. Um, and the Patriots are really starting to click. So I, I mean, he would be the number one guy for sure for me. Yeah. Last week I had a league where I played both guys, Harris and Ramondre. And I, this week I will not be doing that. I'll just be playing Harris, but I'm sad because I know, What's going to happen? Mm -hmm. I know that there's going to be Ramondre drives. I know that he may end up with the goal line carry here or there, and it's going to break my Damian Harris heart. Mm -hmm. It's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. But outside of those top options, talk to me about this very depleted running back. <laughs> there's a couple. There's a couple out there. Yeah, th let's talk about the Jets. We talked about it earlier. That's, that's where you got to start. That's got to be the best kind of situation to try to. To, to look through here with Ty Johnson and then Tevin Coleman. Yeah, that that's my number one guy um, this Which one? week. Is to, personally Ty Johnson. Okay. Now, I, I'm not. I don't have the confidence that he would even be the first man up. It could very easily be Tevin Coleman, but I do have the confidence that he is the more valuable runner. That he's he's got far more juice. Um, we've seen several good games from him uh, the previous three weeks with Michael Carter doing well. He was a top 36 running back all three weeks. Um, so I Ty Johnson is my number one running back pickup who's available in the vast majority of leagues. Yeah, I should have thrown Devontae Freeman into the likely rostered category as well, but he has been really good. He's a top 24 running back in four of five, uh, the last five games. He does seem like the best runner that they have right now. So just I want to throw his name out there. But yeah, it, I, I think that the backfield has clarified that he is the the 1A at That's least. right. Uh, the, but yeah, Ty Johnson, I agree with you on that one, though. I would take him over Tevin Coleman. It's, it feels very much uh, similar to the Tennessee Titans 
situation we had just you know a uh, couple weeks ago of is it Adrian Peterson or is it Jeremy McNichols because Tevin Coleman is pretty washed at this point of his career. He's Ty, the Adrian Peterson. Yes, yeah, and Ty Johnson is explosive, but will the team just keep putting Tevin Coleman out on the field? And that's that's my fear. I agree with you guys. If I'm prioritizing this backfield, Ty Johnson, who is I'm going? Uh, that's what I'm going after. I'm not doing like a full fab dump or or anything like that. I'm not. Would you burn a number one priority if you really needed a running yeah. back two for Ty? If I need if I need a starter, Ty Johnson is uh, I think a good start. Miami um, is a a fine enough matchup to where even, I don't expect Ty Johnson to come in and be the dude. Um, there, but he he was succeeding just being the number two with Michael Carter. He's at the very least the number two now. This last sure. week he was uninvolved, but previous to that, you know, three out of four games he had double digit carries. That was with Michael Carter. So I I think Ty Johnson's going to have an, enough game enough fantasy points to um, be a necessary. You know, if you need a start, you can get ten points from him. He was on a hundred and two target pace with the preceding four games in terms of the passing game work with Mike White. Yes, and then all of a sudden one target last week. But um, I I'm. If you, look, get a win. I mean, if you got to go out there and, and use a waiver spot, and you think Ty Johnson can help your team this week because you don't have anybody at running back, you're going to get some points out of that. And some points is what you're looking for here. That's the highest standard we have for this week's waiver wire <laughs> at running back is some yes. points. If yep. you, there is one situation where you could. Oh, I think it's possible where you get a good some amount. Of, a, a good amount. Of a points. good amount. But it's going to feel so gross. Right, another player. Another team, another situation. Okay. Houston? Yeah. I mean, you don't get grosser than <laughs> Rex Burkhead. <laughs> Sexy Rexy is back. But the dude had 18 carries. He's playing the Mark Ingram role. Yeah. And, and he's, he's having the Mark Ingram success. And they're right, which is none. Which is 40 yards on 18 carries. But the New York Jets are the matchup. Wait, so we got another we got the Texans and Jets. We got another yes. Tets situation? Oh no. Oh. T E T S Tets. T E T S Tets. What? Jason didn't get a lot of sleep last night. No, I didn't. I did not. Um but I in that uh that chamber I was talking about earlier. Yes. It's it's so hyperbolic. Um Yeah, but I mean Rex Burkhead with the opportunity or David Johnson. I mean, you can really I think I would take both of those guys over Tevin Coleman. You can feel pain and any way, right. shape, or form with Houston. Yeah, I mean, you want one of the things you're looking for here is at a bare minimum, you want some opportunities. You want some points. You want to pray and hope for a touchdown. I think you get that with the tie with David Johnson and Rex Burkhead. You get a chance. Um, it's not pretty outside of that. We all expect Cordero Patterson back, which kind of, you know, if he's back, I'm not looking to Quadri Olson. Agreed, but what if he's not? Then I'm looking to go to Olsen. Okay. okay. Uh, I wasn't sure if he was just completely hands-on. Not with hands joy, on. with much sadness and depression. Okay. And then my my deep league running back I want to mention, uh, it's not great, but DJ Dallas with Carson's out for the year. Rashad Penny got banged up. Do we have an update on on him at all? Cause like it, it was hamstring, yeah. No cause, update. Because if Rashad Penny is out and it, it is just – Alex Collins and DJ Dallas, then Dallas will see a, a handful of opportunities. And Travis, and Travis Homer. Yeah, I was sure. going to say, that means it'll end up being a Homer game. <laughs> Possible. It's a uh, deep leaks. Homer had three catches the week before, did nothing last week. Uh, all right, we don't need to talk about running backs anymore. Stay focused there and don't blow your waiver priority on any other speculative ads the that are out there. What about Tony, Tony James Brooks no. Jones? He didn't. He didn't really do much. This right, lesson. but but Kamara looks like he's trending out. Mark Ingram was limited on Monday's estimated report. Well, you can sign him if you want. Well, yeah, I, maybe I will. If Mark Ingram was out, I, I I mean, obviously he becomes very interesting. He's a stash, and we've got plenty of stashes. You know, your Alexander Madison and mustaches, Sony Michelle, and those guys. That's what His all his name he is, is to Tony me. Jones, right? Yes. Tony Jones Jr. Yes. Okay. It's been so long. It's been so long since I knew his real name. Well, are, you're saying what he goes by. 
Yeah, which apparently is on the website. Tony Tony Brooks James Jones Jr. Right. That did is you his put that in there? Full name. You were we darn show right name. I did. Why is the why is the Brooks part in there? Oh, it was, uh, that's his name. I mean, I, I don't. <laughs> no, that's in there because there was a. Um, remember in the very beginning of the year, there was also a Tony Brooks Jr. Oh, was that what? It, and you were. And yes, I was confusing yes, yes. Tony Jones Jr. and Tony Brooks Jr. from okay. Atlanta. All right. I mean, dude, there's a clear path of deduction for these nicknames. Tony Tony Brooks James Jones Jr. is a decent stash. All right. At tight end, Logan Thomas. Yep. Uh, I, I'd be looking at the Austin Hooper, David and Joku world for upside just because Baltimore struggled against tight ends and you have nobody to catch the ball right now, Anthony Schwartz and Donovan peoples Jones and Jarvis Landry's knee and no more Beckham and no Kareem hunt. Like you inevitably want the up, you want upside at the tight end. And I feel like there is some there for Hooper. Yeah, I I would. It's ironic. I think if you're just looking matchup based, I almost wonder if Njoku is better. Uh, I believe that Baltimore is the only team in the league that has actually given up more touchdowns from outside the red zone than inside the red zone uh, in the passing game. They get beat on deep shots and big plays all the stinking time. That is their Achilles heel of this defense. So I'm looking in that matchup of guys who can make a big play. Um, stretch the field, get a bomb, you know, like people's Jones or Schwartz, but at tight end, you know, I doubt Austin Hooper gets a 40 yard bomb. Yeah. Hooper was number seven, two weeks ago, got a touchdown, but minimal yards. Like you said, if you're looking for hashtag some points, Tyler Conklin is always providing oh, some, points. always some, mm -hmm. uh, not Conk, a lot. Conk, 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 baby. And then, uh, but Logan Thomas has a lot of upside coming back. Yes. You know, you talked about Curtis Samuel. If Tom Thomas is back, I'd, Flex Thomas over Samuel in, in on a roster because I don't know what Curtis Samuel has right now. And and I would throw in Cole Komet's name. I know sure. last week he was unused. Two targets, one reception. <clears throat> but the previous three weeks, six targets, six targets, eight targets, had six for 87 be right before the bye. This is against Detroit, a great matchup without Allen Robinson. He was on the field for 90% of snaps. Um, I think Cole Komet would be... He's trending up. Some points. Chicago on defense. Let's turn to defensive waiver wire pickup. Chicago plays Detroit. They're only 11% rostered. This is a week that you can stream them. But what if... What if Jared Goff is back? Great. Yeah, that Bears might be defense. better. I don't, I don't know. I mean, they're widely available. That is a smash grab and play. And the Cowboys, who are scoring tons of fantasy points, play the now muddled... Raiders offense that can't really put up a lot. And um, I don't think Brian Edwards had a target last week. You know, Ruggs isn't there anymore. They tried to give an end around to Deshaun Jackson. And I swear he, <laughs> he was like, his, he ran out of gasoline three, very quickly. <laughs> yeah. And just fell over. Um, they are struggling right now. This is a kind of a pride game too with at home, Dallas defense, there's a lot to like about them to start them this week. And the Eagles have been on fire. Their yes. defense yes. has been scoring fantasy points. And they play the Giants and Jets. So you're getting a two-weeker if mm -hmm. you pick up the Eagles. Yeah, I mean, if it, that might be something where if you're looking and the Bears and the Eagles are both out there, if you don't already have another defense on your roster that's good the following week, I would probably take the Eagles over the Bears. I would take the Cowboys over the Eagles, though, because they do play New Orleans, who struggled on offense as well. So you would go I'd go Cowboys, Cowboys Eagles, Bears. Yeah. If oh, I'm, my. Oh, my. Well, and, and it's Vegas, Saints, and then Washington for Dallas. But I think that's the end of the list that I want to talk about. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, stashing defenses, the yes. Vikings. If you're looking for week 13, because this is the point of the season when, you know, we get asked the question, is it okay if I have I have two defenses on my team? Yeah, this is the time of year that I'm starting to look forward because the, the waiver wire, it's it's getting slimmer, and you need to be proactive and not having to – not in the, the bidding war when it's the actual week to play them. So next week, the Minnesota Vikings get uh, the Detroit Lions matchup and the Indianapolis Colts who play Tampa Bay this week. So – they're they're available in about sixty percent of leagues. That could be more when you look at your waiver wire tomorrow, and the Colts get to take on the Houston Texans next week. And what a joy that is! Yes, it is. The Rex Burkhead led. Like when you do the <laughs> when you do the picture, you know they have the like the face off videos where it's like one player representing mm -hmm. a team. 
Is it soon to be Burkhead representing the? Oh, certainly. It's probably Tyron. Yep. Full stream ahead. My quarterback streamer of the week, I pivoted. I, I think Taylor Heineke is a great one. So I, I'll just throw that out there. I think Heineke is a good streamer. Um, but I will go with Jimmy Garoppolo against Minnesota. Um, over the last month, Jimmy Hanselm, he's averaging 22 fantasy points a game, completing 70% of his passes. You have a full allotment of weapons on offense now with Kittle, Ayuk, and Debo all healthy, all together. And um, Minnesota's pass defense has uh, torpedoed over the last month. So I, mm-hmm. I like this. I think this is a game that could be very competitive, could be high scoring. And they've leaned on Jimmy G with – you know some inefficiencies and injuries in the running game, and he's he's delivered. He was a he was the number two quarterback last week. Yeah, yeah I, Jim, I don't mind it. Jimmy G. I'm sorry, Minnesota gave up. Yeah, the number two quarterback overall. So there's opportunity. Yeah, he's he's been efficient in his last couple starts. My my streamer was originally going to be Daniel Jones. I still think you can. There's a, obviously a very big gap between whether or not you're a good NFL player and whether or not you're okay at fantasy. Mm -hmm. Daniel Jones has plenty of top fantasy finishes. Uh, Of course, he can crash too, but um, the Eagles are giving up the highest completion rate in the NFL, 72%. But I I don't want to trust Daniel Jones. I will go with Taylor Heineke as mine because if those two guys were on waivers, I would certainly grab Heineke over him uh, with Logan Thomas coming back, possibly Curtis Samuel, um, the emergence of, you know, Carter, and you've obviously got Scary Terry out there. The The weapons are there. I would go Taylor Heineke. And I'm going with Cam Newton, and this is a – I imagine this will be the last time you can actually stream Cam Newton because this is a – you pick him up, and you might have a quarterback for the future. The Miami Dolphins will be the matchup. Uh, the Miami Dolphins have allowed the most passing yards in the NFL, and we've seen Lamar, Josh Allen, you know, recent – Recent performances by mobile quarterbacks, and they've just destroyed the Miami Dolphins. So I think that Cam is is a priority pickup if you are struggling at the quarterback position. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there is a baseline there with Cam that seems mm-hmm. comfortable, regardless of whether you think he's got upside week to week. Um, I think we're going to learn whether or not this is this is either going to be the next phase of Cam Newton's career or the end of it. Right. Like with this this end of the season, we're going to know whether he's got any anything left. You know, we we talked about Big Ben and hoping, you know, he was going to be better. Will Cam Newton show us something with these cuz he's got the weapons to do it. Like if you can't do it now with DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, Christian McCaffrey and company. What what I think is is even more interesting is he only has to do it for half a year. And if he has a good half a year, yes. Carolina will bring him back. But can Cam actually hold up to an entire season? Because we saw him be – we he was carrying the Patriots' offense for about two-thirds of that season, and then it all just fell apart, and he couldn't do it anymore. And, and obviously, Bibelichek and, and every other team in the NFL decided he couldn't do it anymore right. before this week. So uh, it will be very, very interesting to see. It's a fun time of year. Um, fantasy playoffs right around the corner. What, three weeks left for most leagues before you get – into the fantasy football playoffs. So be planning ahead, be thinking about each of these decisions with the short and long term in view. And depending on your playoff positioning, that's what's going to define it. Like, we don't want to just, like, if we, it would be easier for us probably to get on the show and just give you a list of like five waiver pickups at each position. But the truth is, is fantasy football is nuanced, it's contextual, it's based on your opponent, it's based on a lot of factors. And, so you gotta you gotta do a little work yourself. That's right. We put the ball in the tee, and you make that decision based on your context. We want to thank Traeger. Do you have news for us? Or yeah, what, I, don't, what you got? I don't. We we were talking about David Johnson and Rex Burkhead. Mm-hmm. What about Philip Lindsay? Oh, he's been cut. Really? They love Rex Burkhead. They and David cut Johnson. Philip Lindsay. Texans cutting. Did he have any snaps back last Phillip week? Philip Lindsay. So yeah, I mean that that gives more confidence to both David it's, Johnson and. It and certainly Rex does. Probably also means Royce Freeman will be active. Uh, yeah, could be. Goodness, they yeah. have gone through a roulette of. Yeah, he had three uh, percent of snaps last week, one for negative three, and was cut. That is um. That is a bad year for Philip Lindsay. He he was two point six per attempt. You would have thought you'd see something, like a play here or a play there. It's crazy. He burned bright. And then he burned yeah. out. 
I want him to just sign with another team and average six yards of carry. It's not impossible. No, it's not. All right. We want to thank Traeger Grills for supporting the show. Of course, we love Traeger Grills. And like I said, traditions are better with Traeger. Very excited about the Thanksgiving uh, coming up where we will have a 12-pound brisket all carved up and ready to go. Uh, Wood-fired flavor. I'm excited because I want to... You know, a lot of my family they haven't experienced the Traeger. Ooh, like maybe I've had some burger nights, but I haven't right. done a brisket, and this is going to be like the debut. And we got it at our house. I couldn't live without my Traeger anymore. <laughs> you just wouldn't. I just life wouldn't be worth living. It's not a world I want to live in. And uh, we'll we'll be monitoring that cook with the Wi-Fi technology this Thanksgiving. Add wood-fired flavor to your feast with a Traeger grill, and you can do so very easily by going to Traeger.com slash footballers. I want to thank Pristine Auction for sponsoring the show. Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. That is right. Things that are available currently and their current prices. We're talking a Stephon Diggs signed jersey. Right now just sitting at $42. A Deontay Johnson signed jersey. It ends tonight and is sitting at just $36. PristineAuction.com. Use our registration code BALLERS and you'll get a $10 credit for your first auction victory. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Make sure you subscribe, follow, leave us a review if you're feeling Hit that generous. Word. Hit the waiver wire and get some points. Some points. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.